I'm Dan Johnson. I'm talking with Dennis Carla here. You probably know him because of this airplane we're standing in front of, and you should know it. It's been one of the success stories in all of ultralight aviation. But there's something new on this airplane. Step a little bit to the side, Dennis, and tell me what that strange-looking motor you got up there. And I guess I use the right word in this case. Yep, that's it's right. Not an engine. Not an engine. It's a motor. That's right. This is. Uh, we've been working on this project for a little over a year uh, for electric propulsion. We we knew our airframe would be adaptable to that, so we made a couple changes uh, structure-wise to support the uh, the battery compartment here behind the seat. Um, we we had. Uh, two or three different incarnations of the motor uh, to get it where we want it. Uh, but now we've got it to the point where it's uh, flying really good, it's performing really well. Uh, if we put four battery packs in here, we've got a duration coming up on an hour's worth of flight time. And uh, I think we're ready to, you know, we've had more and more requests for electric propulsion over the years. So now we're at a point where we're ready to offer this to guys if that's the way they want to go. Okay, a couple of things I want to pluck out of that. One of them you said you've been working on the motor configuration. Now are you talking about the motor itself, what's the right one, or how you mount it, or where you mount it, or all of the above uh, no the the mount and where we mount it and that you know when we designed that that has stayed the same okay uh, we've we've done some different windings and configurations on the motor uh, experimenting really? with different uh, rpms to get to get where we want with a balance of max rpm on the motor versus what pitch we can put in the prop and give us a good balance of climb performance versus economical cruise once we get to altitude and you told me something there I've never heard from anyone about electric motors, and I've done a few of these interviews about electric motors, but you are, are adjusting how the thing is literally wound inside, the wires that make the bundle that make up an electric motor. Those are configured differently to achieve those things you said? They, they can be. And, uh, you know, the, the electrical engineers that we worked with on this, or actually engineer, singular, that uh, he has explained a lot of things to me. I have comprehended about 10 percent of that as far as the uh, <laughs> that's you know, honest the, the, yeah the the, the i'm still it, at the one percent uh, level well, so you're, you're an expert sometimes he's saying words that i'm never going to understand but uh, the basics of what he has explained to me is they they can wind this differently to accomplish different things and that hmm. may be the way this one is made and configured for our airplane might not work on somebody's fiberglass you know motor glider or something so there is some latitude there of what they can do uh, this is the third one uh, 2000 uh, rpm okay. max on this and it's really performing very very well uh, 2000 max propeller rpm max motor, motor rpm because yeah, it's direct okay. there's no reduction ah, ah, i see right of course yeah. it's, it's a direct drive unit yep of course it kind of looks like folks if you're seeing these ribs here uh, it does kind of look like a big belt drive but it, it's not that at all it, that's just the motor housing i guess is that correct? That's yeah. correct, yeah. Okay, then you said something else that I want to focus on because you said a lot of people have been asking you for it. Really? I mean, yeah. I know people are kind of entranced by electric, well, that's but true. they're ready to buy two. They're not oh, just yeah. going, oh, yeah, show me that. Okay, that's fine. Now I'm going to go buy a different one. Yeah. They're no. actually looking for this. That's true. And we have, uh, you know, over the years, in the past probably four or five years, the number of inquiries and questions we would have at Oshkosh or Sun and Fun has just steadily increased. You know, do you have an electric propulsion? Will you have an electric propulsion? So that became more and over more. Over time, you've yeah. noticed more yeah, and more. Oh, yeah, that. definitely. And so we, we reached a point where, you know, first it was an idea, yeah, we'll do that someday. Then it was, okay, we're going to do that pretty soon. And then finally, okay, we'll try to fit this in with everything else that we're doing, <laughs> which is why it took so long. You know, we're always busy building planes. But it took us about a year, a little over a year, from the first one we put right? on, yep, to get it to this point where we are now. And at this particular point, other than a few minor programming changes that our engineer suggests after we send him flight data, uh, the system itself is where we want it to be, okay. and it's you know it's ready to go. So you're collecting flight data, and and this engineer you're talking about that sounds quite knowledgeable is going to take that and go. Ah, I see we could I don't know tweak it or whatever whatever they do with. Yeah, it's not like adjusting the spark or yeah. or putting a different fuel mixture in there. I don't even know what they do to make <laughs> things happen differently, but yeah, I well, trust that they know something. And he does. I mean, it's basically a programming. Uh, it's a basically programming changes to how the motor responds to various, you know, heat cr criteria. Uh, or, heat, heat's a major deal. Yeah, huh? and you know, this particular amount, and 
we've got a fairly clean airflow coming through that. Right. Uh, I mean, I have taken this airplane and put it into absolute full power climb and held it there at 40 miles an hour, and I can't get the motor to its max temperature. It just doesn't get there. Is now, that right? I, motor temp, controller temps, we, we've got no issues uh, at all so far with those. There are basically three, uh, are they cells, are they batteries? What do you refer to the each unit yeah. of? We call them battery packs. Battery and, pack, yeah. okay, let's go with that. Okay. So there are three battery packs down there now. Yep. And you can see, folks, that there's a little space down there uh, on, on this side, you see maybe just some silver components. Those are some aluminum blocks, basically. That you're just holding space with those. Yeah, because we took one battery back out and put it on the table so everybody could see it rather than having to duck underneath the airplane to get to sure. it. So, yeah. But they just kind of, now there's a top bracket up there, mm -hmm. and they just sort of slide down in yep and i gather that there's a receiver down on the bottom that catches the plugs or something or well no all the plugs are up on the top they're kind of hidden by the parachute there you can see where the oh, harnesses yeah, yeah, are plugged yeah, in I see they are. so the basically the battery packs are just sitting down into an aluminum tray which is permanently mounted to the airframe and then it's got the retraining uh, or retaining strap on the uh, top that holds it in there and that you can do it with two three or four batteries so it's okay. modular in that sense so if you have, let's say you have four batteries in here, Dan, you take one of the 110 volt chargers, you plug it into any battery, and it will charge all Ow. four of those oh, batteries. It will do with all of them Correct. if they are... If they're all connected by the wiring harness, which is in there. Okay. If you, and that will charge at basically one fourth the rate that it will if you connect one charger to one ah. battery. So if you want to charge them, you know, you get done flying today, you know you're going to come back tomorrow night, you plug one charger into one battery, It'll charge up all the batteries in the airplane. You come back next day and it's ready to go. If you want to charge them faster, you disconnect the wiring harness from each battery. You can charge each one independently with its own 110 volt charger. When they're all charged up to full capacity, you plug the harness back in and you're good to go. If it's at its lowest point and you are charging one battery on a 110, it'll be six to eight hours worth of charge time. Okay, okay. Um, but you don't, you never run these things down to yeah, that capacity. You don't really drain the last drop right. of gas out of them, kind of, so to exactly. speak. Exactly. So give me an example to put that in real terms. I flew the, I flew this plane for about 25 minutes last week. I plugged one charger into one battery, and it had three batteries in it, just like you see it configured okay. here. And those three batteries were charged up back to full capacity in about five hours. What is the cost of a battery pack? They're expensive, aren't they? Yeah, they are expensive. And the uh, each battery pack with a charger uh, is about $2,500. 2500 Yeah. Okay. So if you if you configure the airplane with two batteries, uh, the controller... Which the, is the minimum, right? Yeah, you have to have two to fly. Minimum That's correct. two, okay. Yeah. So two batteries, you got roughly $5,000 there. And the the motor, the mount, the controller, the throttle, all the cabling all adds about another forty five hundred. So you okay. get yourself up to about nine ninety five hundred dollars oh. with two batteries, which is that's the higher end of the gasoline engine stuff. That yeah, we put but on. but it is, I mean, and that's for this airplane. We're not talking about a nine twelve or something. That's right. quite a bit more. Right. But yeah. for the normal motor, you gasoline motor engine. Mm -hmm. Use my right terms. With the normal gasoline engine you would put on here, you're similar at mm -hmm. least. Yep. It makes me think, what's the life of a battery pack? As you know, now you're, you're fairly new into this. Yeah. So we're, we're not talking your actual experience. We're yeah. talking what you believe may be the case. Well, just I'll to give you a caveat on that. Refer back to our engineers because that, you know, the, the basics, when I asked him that question, he says 500 cycles. Okay. So 500 cycles and that cycle is based on it's subjective in the fact that it's based on, you know, 500 cycles when you've depleted it to 50% is not going to be the same if you're only flying and depleting it to 75%. It might be 700 cycles at that. I so see. Okay. It's, all, it's all relative. Tell guys that if you, the way we've got this set up right now, if you have four batteries in that airplane and you take off, you do a reasonable climb to a 700 to 1,000 feet of altitude. You throttle that back to an economical cruise. You can fly for about an hour if you have four batteries. Now, if you have that same four batteries and you say, I'm going to do takeoff and landings in the pattern to 1,000 foot, <laughs> you're going to get about half that time because the, the drain on the, the, on the cells is disproportionately high in the climb. That's where you're, you're sure. pulling the maximum amount of power. So... Again, it comes back to what are you going to do with it, and we can give you an estimate of how long that is is going to last. But you know, in the ultralight air, you've been around long enough to know that 
most guys take this type of plane out. They go fly for 30 minutes or 30 45 minutes. minutes, and they're they're back at the hangar doing End something End of the else. day, yeah. beginning of the day, midday, whenever you can get away for a little flight and it's a nice time. You don't go for three hours. No. Nobody no. does. Nope. Not in these kind of airplanes. Nope. You could, yes, yep. in a gasoline-powered one, but no one does. That's right, yep. All right. Well, a lot of great information there, but you're still in an early phase of the discovery of many things, even though you're getting deep into it now. Yeah. Uh, tell us how we contact you, Dennis, to find out more about the what I'm calling the E-Aerolite, and yep. I should say, what's your name for oh, yeah, it? We just call it the Electric Powered Aerolite, but <laughs> no catchy phrase so far. Um, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> not yet. But he's married <laughs> to a woman that'll come up alone if she I know. She may very well. That's <laughs> correct um so it's uh, our website's the best uh, www.fly103.com there you go you can't be much easier and simpler than that so go there and check that out you can also find all kinds of things that dennis has been doing for a long time lots of other affordable affordable aviation all that's available on bydanjohnson.com thanks for joining dennis carly and myself here at sun and fun once again